Hello, I'm Andrew Lissim and Kerbal Space Program is at 1.0, coming this Monday the 27th. So let's go into the new features. For a start, you can see the lovely new particle effect here as our rocket takes off. Lovely. There are a couple of other small changes that I'll go through, and there's some bigger changes. So, just quickly mention the fact that there is a great reduced load time. Loading into the game is much quicker. Loading between scenes is also much quicker. This is because they've converted a lot of the textures to being DDS textures rather than uh, PNGs, which is uh, a lovely change, being able to get into the game pretty fast. There is also now a uh, warp to maneuver node function, so no longer do you have to try and warp and try and get to the maneuver node, you can just click on it, go warp here, and you should be able to go pretty fast to your destination. You can also use a maneuver node, if you set the maneuver node and then you click on the new uh, orbit beyond the maneuver node, you can then warp to the maneuver node. It will take you out one minute ahead of the maneuver node, so be careful for longer burns. There is also a new aerodynamic system in the game. This aerodynamic system is a lot more accurate, so instead of just having a random lift force, you will get some crazy stuff like this wiggling here, a lot of force on the planes. This is demonstrated by, let's take a swing out of low orbit, uh, low atmosphere. So here you see we've got a lovely little plane, and I've not got the SAS on the moment. So you can see we're having a lot of oops, squiggling this way and that way. This is because I'm pushing the soundbar. The soundbar is very much a, a solid object almost now in KSP because it really does affect your plane a lot. So now we're pushing the soundbar, and you can see we've got the Mac effects. We're uh, having some problem controlling our plane. But there's also an overheating system that's now in the game. You can overheat and die. So the best way to demonstrate this is uh, actually going to be using the same space plane, just taking it to uh, ridiculous extremes. And you know it's overheated and then just promptly shattered because of the aerodynamic effects. So you've got to be careful about how you re-enter the atmosphere now. In addition, having a look at this lovely new part system, you normally had to just flip through these parts and be like, OK, I've got pages and pages of structural, pages and pages of utility. Utility was pretty bad for that one. Now you can then cross-reference them by these other things, so you can be like, right, I'm going to have a look at parts made by certain manufacturers, I'm going to have parts at certain research tiers that you've uh, unlocked, maybe you'll have a look at parts by how you can attach them or something, like things that can side attach, node attach, etc. So you can see that, ooh, we'll have a giant rock. I'm not sure what that is, but anyway. Also, a small quality of life thing that might be better for people just getting into the game or people not so familiar with the game is this ability to look at stuff like the mass, the length, the height, the width, and also the part count. Useful in general, uh, definitely useful for new players, especially if it gives you tips like you need more energy or you've got things that use energy but no energy production and stuff like that. And a very nice one, we have fairings to go with the new aerodynamic system. So this is going to look at the new parts, look at those fairings go. They're beautiful. Look at how they shatter. And yes, the fairing was incredibly ugly. But I just wanted to demonstrate it for you. So look at the parts, and then we'll go and have a look at the fairings in a bit more detail. So the new parts we have, if we uh, just get up top here, you can see we've got this lovely little Xenon tank that's nicely textured. Oh, isn't it cute? If we go down a little bit further, you notice we've got a battery. And how are we getting energy? It's because we have a fuel cell. Fuel cells take in um, liquid fuel and oxygen and create energy from that. We also have... A load of new landing gear. There's four new landing gear in the game, and if I deploy these two, one of them is particularly a heavy landing gear, if we have a look, you know, specifically for big aircraft. Really nice, actually. Uh, normally, big aircraft would have problems. You'd have to put, like, multiple landing gear on and be a bit awkward. We've also got a, uh, a little cargo bay. So, have a look in the service bay here. You can see that we've got a nice big area there. That means you can put stuff inside of your um, spacecraft without it being on the edge. Especially useful when you're re-entering. Things on the outside might end up overheating and burning off. And also, it's just prettier. We've also got a lovely deployable air brake on the side, just in case you need to go slow for some reason. Uh, we've also got an engine nacelle. That allows you to quickly put uh, you know, engines on the side of your plane quite nicely. We've got a uh, engine pre-cooler for jet engines. That'll make your jet engines more efficient and better generally. We've also got this lovely little air intake that you can stick on the front which looks pretty badass. And if I can get my view down low enough, you can notice we've also got a heat shield so you can actually enter the atmosphere without burning up. It looks pretty badass. I'll give them that. Um, if you have a look at the side, we've got a large delta wing and it can actually contain fuel which is really nice. These are for like space plane type things. Big things, but it contain fuel. I really like that. And we've also got a lovely little, uh, well not so little, shuttle uh, tail fin. Now, going over the fairings in a bit more detail, you see we've got some fairings here, and if I mouse over, you see the oh, eggshell break apart. Just, I, I love this. I still love this effect every time, the way the, the fairings just part, just so you can see things inside. You can't click on the fairing so much, you click on the base of the fairing to operate it. So, I'll just demonstrate that. I mean, I'm still amazed by how this works. But going into a bit more detail about how this bottom bit works, you see if I right-click on it, we'll have Edit and Delete Fairing, so that I can delete the fairing. We can start from scratch, so if we put a fairing in now, it'll be like, oh, where you place it, wait for it to be green, click up, in, click, and then just keep going until you attach them. So if we just go up and we bring it in a little bit, you don't actually have to attach them to a point by the way. You see it doesn't allow me to do that, 
But if I just bring it up and bring it to there, we can, I think we can just end it at the side of Yeah, there we go, it's blue. It'll allow you to end the fairing at the side of your current craft rather than actually creating it into a point, which is useful for, you know, covering mid stages. If we just delete that last point and go up and actually create a proper point on top of our fairing, there you go. It works really well. I love this system. Okay, so the biggest change, and one of my favorites, if not my favorite, is we now have resources in KSP. So, resources are really, really interesting. So, it's more sort of a, a resource collection, refinery, usability kind of system. So if we just put ourselves down here with our lovely little moon lander. There we go, what a lovely little landing. Uh, right, let's deploy our lovely uh, drills. These drills are another new part, and what they do is they deploy out, and they look rather sexy while doing it, and then you can turn them on. And when you turn them on, they will start mining for you. And once you've mined, you will get to collect stuff. So let's just deploy our solar panels and get some energy for these bad boys, because I'm assuming they're going to use a lot of my energy up pretty quickly. And we'll just start all of them up. You can see they've got a lovely little particle effect where they're digging into the moon's surface. It does look pretty badass. And then if we check the ore, this ore canister is a new uh, tank in this version of KSP 1.0 and allows you to store ore. So you can see it's filling up with ore quite nicely there. And we're going to convert it into some fuel. So you can see that our fuel tanks are pretty empty and we can actually convert this. By the way, the one important thing I actually love about this is you can mine at time warp. So it works when you're not looking at the craft. It works at time warp. It's absolutely brilliant. That way you don't have to just sit here and, you know, spend ages just mining off camera or something. You can leave it, you can go to a different craft, you can come back. Really well done. So, you notice here we've got a lot of um, stuff. We're going to try and turn it into fuel. So if we just hit the uh, start liquid, ox uh, liquid, liquid fuel and oxidizer, and we then go on to time warp, and you see that we start filling up our fuel tanks. And this means that you can, you know, have bases where you get fuel, you could refuel your spacecraft en route from one place to the other, you could have, you know, refueling depots, you could have uh, exploration craft that are designed to just refuel as they explore. Brilliant. But how does this work? Right, for a start you have to get a large scanner like this, an orbital scanner, and you deploy it. Now there is some restrictions on how you use this. It has to be in a polar orbit, it has to be more than 80 degrees off of an equ equatorial orbit, and then you can deploy this and you can do a little scan. This will allow you to access some pretty decent data about the body you are scanning. So if we have a look here, you can see we have the moon, and I've scanned the moon with our little sensor. This allows me to look at the overlay for the moon. So if we bring up the overlay and I uh, then select the moon, boop, you can see the ore shows up. Then we click ore, and you see that we've got this lovely little overlay, so I can change, you know, dots, lines, or just general sort of coloured overlay. And change how the colour is represented, you know, particularly so if you're colourblind or you just want to see, you know, one colour, uh, monochromatic, I guess. Um, or you want to see it you know, in, a, in a sort of false color. And then you can change the cutoff so you can see it at higher and lower amounts. Really, really good. I love how this works. Uh, resources are generated on all planetary bodies, I think except for Kerbin. I haven't really tried Kerbin because it's boring. Uh, and, of course, they're uh, generated on asteroids, which allows you to do asteroid mining, which is pretty awesome. Three orange suit veteran Kerbals. We've got a new veteran Kerbal joining them. And you can see here that if we get out, our new Kerbal is in fact a she. Valentina Kerman is joining the three starting Kerbals, so you'll have four starting Kerbals, Jeb, Bill, Bob, and Val. Now I can confirm that after looking in the save files and stuff, Val is in fact a badass. She is the only other Kerbal other than Jeb who has the badass trait. So Val gets equal treatment with Jeb on how awesome she is. And female Kerbals will be able to join your space program just like any other Kerbals now. So you can see we're going to test one of these lovely little additions. Ladders previously, trying to get on top of an object was really difficult. You'd have to place your ladders carefully. Now there's this new option called Clamber Up, and you can just hit F to clamber up on top of an object. This is really nice quality of life, because previously trying to get on top of an object was really difficult, like incredibly difficult. Now you just go up to the top, and then we go climb out, bam, and you're on top of the object. Great. Like, seriously, we needed this for so long, and it it really good. And this is a lovely another quality of life change. Previously the science bay wasn't ooh, it was interesting it was it was not how I would have thought it worked now it works perfectly like I would imagine it's great it generates science you put it above Kerbin it generates science you put it above Jewel now it's it just does generate science it's great whereas previously it 
improve the quality of the science you could send back, but why would you be transmitting science back if you weren't going to bring the Kerbals back? So why would you send Kerbals there if they're not going to get back? It was weird. We also have a load of new contracts. So with the new contracts, we actually have a really good amount of contracts. Actually, I, I really do like how they've changed it. The way they've redone contracts is there's now a load of new contracts. So we have uh, tourists, and they'll want to be taken into space. They'll want certain things. They'll want to go visit places. We also have world first contracts. And these work as a sort of tutorial. It'll be like, oh, first person in space, first person to the moon, first landing on the moon, etc. like that. And they act as a kind of tutorial. I really love that change. It won't matter so much for people who know what they're doing in the game. But for beginners, it offers a sort of in-game sort of tutorial, sort of a pushing down the direction of, you know, pushing further and further out into space. There's also uh, record contracts for being, you know, uh, the fastest, etc. And there's also Grand Tour contract. And they've been completely uh, reworked. There's also recovery contracts, which allow you to pick up, you know, lost Kerbals, possibly even lost craft, possibly landed Kerbals and their craft. They basically hark back to the old re rescue contracts, but they're now recovery. And it can be Kerbals or it can be their gear. You can also get uh, contracts for doing in uh, situ resource utilization. So that's the uh, the re refinery unit we saw earlier, the ISRU. So you actually get ones telling you to do the uh, resource stuff. Oh, and there's also badass little pictures on the uh, the ships to load diagram. Oh, they're amazing. So, really loving it. Uh, in terms of the bugs, the memory leak that uh, has you know plagued it for a very long time has gone. Originally, if you didn't know there was a memory leak, if you were somewhere near the ground or something, you'd start leaking RAM, and because the game runs fairly close to the RAM limit anyway, it would eventually crash. That appears to, from my tests and from the bug tracker, be completely gone. I can't replicate it anymore, which is lovely. One bug that is remaining, and this is, you know, one only one bug that I can really find that annoyed me, is the fact that pass-through on the UI still does happen inside the V8B and Space Plane Hangar. Sometimes when you try and click on an object, you'll actually click through and destroy your craft. That's the only real bug that I can find. So, ultimately, I know I was incredibly skeptical of 1.0, and I said, you know, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to do it. It's a lot of things, it's a lot of asking, it's a lot of push for 1.0. I'll be honest, I'm completely pleased with 1.0. It ticks all my boxes. I am very happy with it everything works. Now the only thing that really isn't in here that was going to eventually be in Curl Synchro is multiplayer. And let's just say multiplayer was never intended to be in 1.0 anyway. It was always going to be a thing that would come out later. It was they said, oh we'll do multiplayer. And to be honest, if you say you're doing multiplayer in a sandbox physics game, you're crazy, but okay. And they never intended it to be in 1.0, so the fact it isn't in 1.0 isn't a criticism. It was never intended to be there, but it will eventually be coming. And then things are going to get crazy. But that is the update for 1.0. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, I think it comes out Monday the 27th. I will be streaming it later today. So you can watch me streaming it at uh, 8 p.m. BST, 7 p.m. GMT. And let's check out the new stuff. But until then, I've been Andrew Elysium. If you've liked the video and you like the new Kerbal Search Run, then please remember to like. And if you're not subscribed, eh, consider subscribing. Because I will be covering the hell out of this. Until next time, though. Stay shiny.